One of the big goals of object-oriented programming is code reuse, and there are a variety of ways that we can reuse code, especially in JavaScript. Now, in your typical object-oriented programming language, code reuse is primarily facilitated through inheritance, inheriting one class from another. There are other ways that you can reuse code, but class inheritance is a biggie. Now, of course, in JavaScript, we don't have classes. We have objects, and we inherit one object from another. That's how we perform inheritance. And while the term inheritance can get a little fuzzy in JavaScript, strictly speaking, there's really only one way to perform true inheritance in JavaScript, and that is by chaining prototypes. Now, we saw this in action in Lesson 2 with the object.create method. But if we are wanting to define our own data types, and inherit one data type from another, object.create is just one piece of the puzzle. So in this lesson, we're going to look at the other things necessary in order to inherit one data type from another. I've already written a base type called beverage. The constructor function has two parameters, one called name, the other called temperature, and those values are used to set properties of the same name. There's also a method called drink, which simply writes a message to the log that says, I'm drinking, and then the name of the beverage. Now this is okay for a generic data type. We can create just about any beverage object that we want and have at least some workable information. But we also might want to create other data types that are more specific, like for example, coffee, because coffee is awesome. So let's create a constructor function called coffee, and this is going to inherit from our beverage. So from an API standpoint, we need to decide what parameters we want this constructor function to have. Because it's coffee, we already know the name, and we already know the temperature. At least it should be hot. There's just something wrong with the concept of iced coffee. So we don't need those things as parameters, but we do need the type of coffee because there are different types of coffee. There is light roast, which is incredibly weak, and then you have dark roast and bold, you know, good coffee. So we could have a type parameter there, and then we can have a type property that we set to that value. And one thing about coffee is whenever it's really hot, you don't really drink coffee, you sip it. And you only drink it whenever it becomes the right temperature. So we could have a method called sip. So let's go ahead and create that on the prototype of our coffee constructor function. And this is not going to accept any arguments. And like the drink method, it's simply going to write a message to the log. But we'll just say sipping some awesome. And then let's put the type, so this dot type. And then we could hard code coffee. But instead, let's put a space here. And then we'll also concatenate this dot name. That way, if we ever need to change the name of our coffee, then that is already done for us. And next, we can go ahead and set up the prototype chain, which is very easy. We simply use coffee.prototype. And used to, we would new up the base data type, beverage in this case. But we don't need to do that anymore. It's much better to use object.create, although you kind of need to type it correctly. But object.create, and then pass in beverage.prototype. That sets up the prototype chain, and that's just one link in the inheritance pattern. The next thing that we need to do is call the beverage constructor inside of our coffee constructor, because we also need to initialize the name and temperature properties. And we do that by using the beverage object and then using the call method. We'll pass in this so that we are executing the beverage function as if it were this object. And then we pass the values for name and temperature. Coffee is the name, and temperature is hot. That gives us everything we need in order to inherit coffee from beverage. So let's create some objects. Let's first of all create a water object. We'll new up beverage, and we'll pass water for the name, and then cold for the temperature. Then we'll create a coffee object, which we'll just call coffee. We'll new up coffee, and I personally like bold and dark roast, so let's just do bold dark roast. And then let's save the file and we'll go to the browser. Let's refresh this page and in the console let's call water.drink and we see the results of I'm drinking water. But let's call coffee.drink. We'll see similar text that says I'm drinking coffee but if it's a fresh cup then we don't want to drink we simply want to sip. 
and we will see the message sipping some awesome bold dark roast coffee. This inheritance pattern is just one way that we can reuse code in JavaScript. There's other patterns that we can use. There's a decorator pattern. There's also a mix-in pattern. And in fact, there are many mix-in patterns. And we are going to look at these code reuse patterns over the next few lessons.